Welcome to Pop Turnitin, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, a.k.a. PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnitin Podcast, the podcast where we have digital discussions in the worlds of pop culture, social media, sports, TV, film, everything really. As always, I'm your host, Peter Meliotis, and on, PD, uh, on Twitter, you know me as PD Beats. I'm really excited because my guest, he's been on the show before, this is his third time coming on the show, but my guest is a gold medalist in mogul skiing at the PyeongChang Winter Olympics, but most recently, he was named the 2018 Lou Marsh Award winner, which goes to Canada's top athlete. We are with Mikhail Kingsbury. Mick, welcome back to Pop Turnative. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely. No, for sure. First off, congratulations on the Lou Marsh Award. Two uh, two quick questions to start off. Talk about kind of the day that you found out about the Lou Marsh Award, because I understand you were in China when it yeah. happened. <laughs> and the second part is, how important do you think you winning the Lou Marsh Award is for the sport of skiing? Yeah, well, first of all, I was, uh, yeah, I was in China when I... I heard the news. Um, I just remember before I went to bed, I knew like in the middle of the night, I would know if I win the Lou March or not. Um, for me, it was just like being in the nom- uh, nomination um, was, you know, pretty like it's it's huge just to have your name there. And even if you don't win, it's a, like it's a it's a big accomplishment. And it's a yeah. And then I, I went to bed and woke up by my phone. It was like 6 a.m., maybe 530. And my phone was just like, like buzzing, like zzz, zzz, zzz. I was like, who's trying to text me <laughs> you know, this morning? Like it's super early. Everyone should know I'm in China. And yeah, I, like I was like almost totally asleep. And I took my phone. And I look at uh, my notification. It was just like, congrats, congrats, congrats. I was like, holy shit. I just won the Lou March. And I went like, first thing I went like uh, to the lobby where there's uh, better internet. And I look like I went on Wikipedia and I look at the list of winners in the past and i was just like very impressed by all the names and i'm a huge hockey fan and like there was like uh uh Hor, gretzky lemieux crosby um price and i was just like super impressed and there was also like a lot of olympian or or athletes i was watching on tv when i was young and just to have my name there you know on, on that list and you know winning the the award is just like um, it's a big accomplishment, yes, but it's, uh, yeah, it's like there's a big like sentiment of like, um, you know, I'm proud, you know, and um, it's a huge honor. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's a pretty awesome, uh, pretty awesome feeling. No, absolutely, and no, and I think it's it's important because you mentioned you know like other sports like hockey and golf. Um, you yeah. know, um, that are in the pub- public eye a lot, but, you know, skiing isn't in as much, right? So, uh, like, how important is it for skiing? It's a huge yeah. deal for skiing. Yeah, it's huge for skiing, I, I think, because, like, it shows that we can, like, um, you know, we have our place in, in the sport. It's been so long before, like, another skier won. Um, I'm the first freestyle skier that won that, that award. And, yeah, it just it's good for... I think in general for amateur sports or Olympic sports, because, you know, it shows that we can like compete in those, uh, you know, athlete of the year contesting with, with, you know, big star hockey player, like, like Connor McDavid. And yeah, it's, I think it's good. And um, yeah, I, for, for, for my sport personally, I'm the first one. And this is, uh, this is big because there's been some legend uh, in the past, like Jean-Luc Brassard, uh, Jennifer Al, Bilodeau, they could all have won um, a Lou March Award easy, in my opinion. But yeah, to to be the first one, it just shows that you know they, you know, Canada takes our sports very seriously. And um, yeah, I just I'm, I'm just super proud, and it's good for the sport. No, absolutely. We'll we'll flash back to um, one of the reasons why there's many reasons why you won the Lou March Award. One of the reasons why you won is, you know, winning a gold medal at the PyeongChang Winter Olympic Games. Now, um, you know, you saw it in, uh, you saw it when you won your reaction, you know, how happy were you yeah. uh, when, when it happened? Cause it's amazing, you know, um, that big score and everything, but is it safe to say that that gold medal just re- like represented 
because it's such a big stage. Everything you've done before that in the year, because it was a huge year going into the Olympics. Well, it was a huge year, like in general, going into the Olympics. I won like 13 World Cup in a row. Mm -hmm. um, my worst result of the full year was the second place in the World Cup, which is like, yeah, it was a pretty decent year. Like, like it's almost impossible for a skier to have a season like I just had. And yeah, and coming into the games, I was um, silver medalist in Sochi. And that was the last piece to uh, the puzzle to put together was for me the, the Olympic gold. And to be the first man ever in the history of our sport to, to be able to win the gold and win everything else um, was huge. And there was quite a lot of pressure for me coming into the games. And I know we talked about it maybe in the other podcast, but I was the favorite by far. And from a media standpoint, it was... Um, like if I win the silver, it was like a deception for, for the country. So, you know, you have a lot of pressure. <laughs> and when you look at like Sport Illustrated stuff, they like, um, you know, predict me with a gold medal and everything I was, you know, reading or people that were talking about it. It was like, um, yeah, gold medal or nothing. So uh, I think I did a good job over there. And I think this is the big reason why I won the, the Lou March is, is, is that because it was like the last thing missing uh, for me. And... You know, I didn't want to be known as like uh, the guy that won everything except the Olympic. You know, every time he got to the Olympic, he choked. But yeah, um, yeah, I was able to, you know, put down the 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 the, the run that I wanted at the right moment. And uh, you know, when we talk about that, you know, fist pump at the oh, end, yeah. uh, that was uh, that was the big moment. For you me. promised when, that to our viewers too, because we had yeah, you on right before. <laughs> I know, and when I like, I didn't thought about it. It was like. When I crossed the line and I did that, I was probably the most, like the best feeling I ever had in my life. You know, when you you have one chance, you know, there's one moment and you're you know you're pretty nervous and you know you work your your whole life for for that 24, 23 second, 24 second, mm -hmm. and you cross the line and this is like this is like the the whatever the cherry on the cake or whatever. Oh, for you sure, no. Absolutely. I feel like we've no like we've known each other for about three, four years now, I believe. And four. yeah, four years. I, I feel like you're the type of guy though, you were talking about, you know, reading like everything people are saying about you. Like I feel like you're the type of guy that thrives under the pressure though. Like I feel like yeah. you like that. <laughs> yeah, no, I love the pressure. For me it's kinda like a drug. Like during the summer when our season is over, I can, that's the thing I'm missing. Like I love skiing, I love competing, but what I miss the most is like those moments like those olympic moments or or those uh, those high pressure moments at the world championship or or in world cup when you're you know someone right before you put down a very good run and then you're like who it's my turn and it's like there's uh there's no march for errors or and i like to read like like i don't read every article they wrote on they, they were like the journalists write on me but i like to to, to read them and uh, I like to read the positive and the negative comments. I think they, they get me fired up to, yeah. uh, you know, to be better. Different people have different things that kind of get them ready. Another thing from the podcast last year, this is my next question, is, uh, before Pyeongchang, did you listen to a lot of classical music when you yes, were over I, there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I, I, I always listen to like some, like I don't really know the names. I just go on my Apple Music and write some stuff but i love like mozart or yeah i don't know yeah i i'm i'm kind of weird with music like i can listen to like metallica if i need to yeah. or i can listen to like very like classical music i don't know it just was it there on my mood. was there an artist or a song that was kind of like the mikhail kingsbury like unofficial anthem of the pyeongchang olympics that you were listening to more than others um you know what the day before my <laughs> my event in my bed um, you know, I received like the last text from like my parents and my family and I listened to um the song of Vancouver, you know, um I believe uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 I believe yeah. yeah. So I think th this song gives me like chills. So I listened to that and when I was skiing, I think the last song I listened to was uh uh Shook Ones Part Two. Okay. Up deep. You know the Yeah. It's like a very like relaxed. <laughs> yeah. Like in the M M movie he does like a freestyle at oh, the yeah. at the end. So that song was probably the last one I listened to. That was my jam. Yeah, this is a question I often ask like I ask like hockey players this, but I feel like this would be a good question to ask you. Who is 
Mikael Kingsbury when he's skiing? And who is Mikael Kingsbury when he's not skiing? So when I ask the hockey players, like, who are you, like, on the ice? And who are you off the ice? So I'm asking you, who are you when you're skiing? Who are you when you're not skiing? Well, when I'm not skiing, I'm just the same normal guy since I'm, you know, a kid. I think uh, if you talk to all my friends from high school that are still my friends now, um, I didn't change. You know, winning the Olympics and winning all the things I won didn't change me personally. And um, I'm still the same guy. I think on my skis, I'm, you know, there's still that, you know, personality that I have outside of skiing. But it's just like, I think when I ski, I'm just more of a confident guy. And like, I don't like, not in a cocky way, but I'm like, I'm going out there to beat everyone. And I'm like, uh, I'm not, you know, I'm, I, I don't get like intimidated by others. You know, I, I'm, I feel like I'm the one that, you know, can um, just by being there, showing up to a competition. Uh, I feel I have that like power or that like aura around me that I'm like, you know, strong. It's kind of like if I'm Hulk when I'm skiing, you know, I'm like, Wah! no, absolutely. Bigger than everyone. <laughs> no, for sure. Um, but a, a couple of weeks ago, I haven't posted it, but I had Caitlin Osmond on the show too. Um, okay. And she talked about her experiences. It sounds like everyone with the Olympics is going to have a different experience or different ways of preparing for things. What did yeah. you find was like, were there any obstacles that you kind of faced when you were down there? Was it kind of, was the... You know, um, was the track a lot different than you thought it was? Like, was there anything kind of unusual that happened when you were down there? Yeah, well, um, the year in 2017, we had an Olympic test event. It was a World Cup, and um, I won I won that event. And the course was, like, very easy. So I was like, oh, yeah, it's going to be like, you know, like we call that in our, in our sport, like, it's going to be a gun show. Like, everyone's going to be good uh, because it's going to be easier uh and it's gonna be like super fun to ski but we showed up there and it was extremely cold and they built the course with very huge moguls like kind of like pyramids so the first couple of days of training they were super tricky and the course um there was three lines so there was a lot of traffic uh in every line and um yeah it was uh it was way harder and way steeper than it was uh the year before so that was kind of like the first surprise but for me it was always good like I like when it's easier, but when it's harder, it's better for me because it like separates me and from the pack when it's harder. Um, but other than that, there was a lot of traffic. You know, the the at the test event we were staying like right at the base of the course, and now we had like we were every morning we had to drive like forty five minutes in a bus to get to the course and mm -hmm. all those checkpoints and yeah, that's the Olympics. There's always you know more stuff going around, but I was, um, and with my team, we had like a very good plan on, you know, um, showing up to the mountain, doing our job and leave and rest at home, uh, at, in the Olympic village and, you know, get those, uh, message going. And, but, uh, other than that, the course was harder. Um, it, we were competing very, very late at night. So we just had to adjust our schedule with that, but we did a good job. For anyone who like follows you on social media, though, like you're like the life of Mikael Kingsbury, it's like it's nonstop, like the Drake song, you know, like it's just like you're always doing something, you're always training, doing an event. It it must be cool that you kind of have a little time back home with the family, watch some World Juniors, kind of take it easy for a bit, because yeah. then, <laughs> then afterwards it's just gonna kind of like boom, it's right back into it. Yeah, I have a pretty busy life, but I like to be busy. It's good busy, like uh, just in the. The last month I went to Finland, China, three World Cup. Um, but before that, I think in the week before, uh, the two weeks before uh, starting the season, I went to Toronto like three or four times to do some events and some sponsor stuff and mix that with training. So um, yeah, it's cool. But I love uh, I love this time of the year. I think it's the it's the most wonderful time of the year, of course. And uh, yeah, I love Christmas and I love like sitting down with my family. You know, I have a good glass of wine and. And, you know, recharge my battery, watch some hockey on TV. The World Juniors, man. Yeah, World Juniors, a couple NHL game. And then this is like, this is what I need for me. I just need like 10 days of this. And then I can go back. We start and we're going to Calgary after. And Yeah, so what's and next then, for you in the new year? Well, after the new year, I got an invitation to go for an event for the 
Golden Globes in LA. I'm not sure yet if I'm going. I really want to go. And then um, what? Really? Yeah, yeah, it's like an event called Gold Meets Golden. That's um, awesome. Yeah, so I got an invitation there. I want. I really want to go. It's on Sunset Boulevard in the in the Hollywood. But then I, I'm gonna have a little train, Kevin Calgary. We have a walk up there, and then I fly back home, drive to Lake Placid, New York, compete there, drive back to Tremblant, compete there, and then fly to World Championship in Utah, and then fly to Japan, fly to Kazakhstan, fly to Europe, and then back home. So yeah. Man. <laughs> It's a it's a busy schedule, but <laughs> it's it's fun. It's fun. I mean, I'm I'm traveling with my best friends, and uh, you know, I'm skiing, and my job is to ski. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's busy. It's it's hard on the body, but it's a lot of fun. Absolutely. Well, I think we'll wrap up soon. But first off, show everyone your ring. Oh yeah, I just got um, a new ring, where I'm pretty stoked. Here, I don't know if uh, the camera can spot it well. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's my ring from uh, from Pyeongchang. Um, it's actually made uh, by um, a jewelry store that made the the, the rings for um, uh, the Montreal Canadian when they won in '93. So it's pretty special, and I'm yeah pretty proud of, of does it. Does your does your gold medal have its own like bed somewhere? Like, do you put your gold medal to sleep every night? Like that uh, first week when you got it, it was probably like <laughs> yeah uh, yeah well. My mom takes care of my uh, my gold medal. I don't like if I need it. I ask her. She keep it safe and. and like, oh yeah, for sure. If, uh, yeah, I don't get in trouble if I lose it. So. Do you ever? Has, yeah. <laughs> Do you ever have moments where you're like, I want to see it again? Because like this happened all the time, or do you just um, forget about? Well, I, cause... I I like the. I never have like moments like I'm just gonna look at it. But I like when like, I didn't look at it for like the past two months and. I had an event and I asked my mom, hey, mom, can you give me my gold medal? <laughs> and just like that moment when she gave it to you, you open it and you watch it, you're like, oh, yeah, this is mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, a, it's a pretty special feeling. Like just because I've been like dreaming since I'm like a kid, you know, uh, to win the Olympics. I mean, I'm, I'm more proud of like everything that I went through to and all the like memories I have like trying to win that medal mm-hmm. and the actual medal i like when it's, I what was, it, it's what it repre- I, it's what it yeah. represents right yeah yeah now it's more like when i look at it i just i have flashback of all the memories so it's um yeah it's it's pretty special to have to have a to have a gold medal um in the family here <laughs> oh, that's amazing well uh Mikhail, congratulations on the lou marsh award congratulations on the Thank olympic you. gold medal um third time on the show so that means you might be getting a mug yeah so in the fourth time i'll be like drinking out of yeah it. from the pop <laughs> mug, absolutely where could people follow you on social media remind them where they could check out all the stuff oh yeah so um they can follow me on the instagram at michael kingsbury um <laughs> and twitter same same thing michael kingsbury and uh, facebook just um type my name and fan page and also i have a website but it's pretty much linked from all my social media mm-hmm. stuff. So just go follow me on social media and um, I'll be happy. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Merry Christmas, Mick, and Happy New Year to you and your family as well. Thanks, Pete. No problem. Well, this has been Pop Turnative, youtube.com slash Pop Turnative for previous episodes. And until next time, this is Mikael Kingsbury and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.